it's and it's usually sometimes one song can be mostly uh, worked on like by one person and sometimes it can be just everybody putting their inputs so it's it really says like every song has a different story but we don't we don't uh, actually sit in a room jamming a lot you know it's it's more like I don't know, because sometimes it feels like, especially with music like this, very technical, and if you just sit for a long time, for example, I, I come up with a riff, then it's very difficult to play, right? And I, I practice at home for like an hour, and then I go uh, uh, rehearsal, and then I show it to somebody else. And then they, before we start jamming around that riff, they have to learn how to play it. So you end up like spending an hour just to wait somebody's to learn that, so it's, yeah, so we don't do that much. Hello. Hi. Uh, what's your how? Uh, how can you? I'm, I'm, uh, I I mean, I want to know about sweep picking. Actually. Excuse me. Sweep picking. Oh, sweep picking. Okay. What's your take on sweep picking, and uh, what would you recommend uh, beginners for sweep picking? Okay. Um, the the one thing that is super important about sweep picking, and then uh, you hear that you see a lot of people don't pay too much attention to. It. They just try right away to do it fast. And then when you do it fast, it kind of sounds like a slur that you can't really tell what's going on. And that you definitely don't want to have any of that. You don't want to, like, some people do sweet picking and you only hear the first and last note. And, you know, and then that's kind of like also when you don't, you don't take enough time to practice it slow. The important thing with sweet picking is that it needs to be a very even movement, you know? So it, it should not be like, if I'm doing... Right, and you wanted the same kind of okay. You know, if, for example, if I, if I'm playing like a even an A minor, right? So if the, the, right for, like that, but you can think about ways to isolate certain notes, and so you're still playing inside that scale, but you are accenting certain kind of sounds. Okay, so you could play maybe just like the root, the ninth. Okay, I'm now playing the third, and then I go back to here. So I'm playing two notes per string. Okay, so I'm playing inside that scale, but it doesn't sound like that scale anymore. So I do a lot of that. And then the other thing that you can start doing is start adding chromaticism in between. So if I, I want to put chromaticism in between every note, it will be like... Okay, but I can also do only two, four, so... Okay, and when you start adding chromaticism, it kind of starts sounding a little more like in the jazz territory. But that's something that I love to put in a, in a metal context. So, you don't, sometimes you don't need like weird or different scales to just start it, you know, adding things like that. So that's something that, uh, you know, so like pretty common scales, but you know, every once in a while I like to experiment and try to do something completely different, but a lot of it is playing like traditional skills just in a different way.
just as curiosity, so I'm gonna try it. And that was the first time, like, believe it or not, I always had guitars around me, but I never even touched one. I had no interest whatsoever. And then that time, like, just curiosity, I said, like, I'm gonna try. And then I remember my brother showed me a C major chord. So I was like, for a little bit, like, even struggling playing that. And then a few chords, and I don't know. I got, all of a sudden, I got so interested into, like, playing guitar. And then I started listening, like, literally in, a, like, a week. I started listening to, like, Satriani, Sibai, John Pesucci, all that. So it was kind of like, wow, this is a completely different new world that I had no idea. And, uh, and of course, I went and sold my saxophone and I bought my own Ibanez guitar. So that's how it started. <laughs> So, uh, were your first influences Satriani and Steve? Where, where were you, uh, what were your mainly first main first influences? In the beginning, yeah, yeah, I'd say uh, Steve I, John Petrucci, Joe Satriani were like the three, the three, really like I was blown away. And then of course you know you start listening to many others because there's so many good guitar players around. So but that's how it started. Hey Francesco. Uh, how do you coordinate your odd time signatures with the band, with the drama and the rhythm? Um, uh, how do I coordinate it? Um, the thing with time signature, the way I see it, it's, you know, it's, it's, they're called compound meters. So it's like you basically combine two meters. For example, the song that I just played has a lot of 7, 8, and 9, 8. Okay, so how do you think about a 7, 8? To me, you know, as a comp compound meter, you think about four plus three, that gives you seven, right? So it's a measure of four, four, or like uh, in that case, four, eight, and then three, eight, right? And then that two combined, it gives you seven. You, s you think about smaller numbers, it's just easier to follow it. Like the same thing with five, it's two plus three, or two plus two plus one, depending on the way, the way you want to play it, the way that the riff tells you to play it, and, uh, and drummers, if you think about it, it's like in the rock, metal, band kind of work. They're basically conductors of the, the band. So for them, it's also like a lot of the accents, a lot of the, the way they play a beat, a group, it's, it's, that's how it's gonna tell you how to count it. But of course, while I'm playing it, I'm not counting. You know, it kind of like, that's more like a study kind of thing. And so after you, you feel comfortable with the rhythm, I think that's when you can start using it. I always tell people, don't, you know, I mean, as a curiosity, as a study, yeah, you, you can do it, but don't start doing like odd, like, like weird time signature just because it's cool, just because you heard somebody telling you. If you feel like it's the sound that you like, you, and then you, you already have it in, in you. So a lot of it is listening to a certain kind of music that, you know, it, it kind of like pushes you to experiment and try things. But it, literally, even when you like think about, I don't know, like a 15, 16, something like that, crazy, you know, it's always, always like you can think about like, it's, it's basically like a 4-4, four, four, but you, the last 16th is missing. So you can think of, of like the first 3-4 of the, the measure, right? And then you start adding like a smaller measure at the end. So you think about a three four in the beginning. Okay? So that's like helps so much, helps a lot just to understand the, the, the rhythm. So so Francesco, you start playing the saxophone at the age of fourteen. You 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 played for about three years, sold the saxophone, so then you must have started playing the guitar at maybe at twenty? Uh, nineteen. Nineteen. Cool. What was your first metal band? Like the deathcore type metal, the screaming type metal? Like, uh, the first, first heavy, heavy thing, like, I mean, like, you can't consider really that heavy, like, a Pantera in terms of singing, so I, I think, are you considering, like, something heavier than that? Okay. Uh, I think, that, you know, it, it, it started, like, in, in the beginning, I was, the, the first real heavy with growl, was Opeth. That was the first band that I liked. Because in the beginning, I didn't like anything, any scream, any growl. I was always like one of those ones like, oh, that doesn't sound right. But then I started listening to those, that, that band, and then right after Meshuga. And to me, the, the music, 
was so interesting and so like it was speaking to me finally and then I started seeing that kind of vocals not as just like vocals but kind of like an instrument it's like a layer on top of the music and uh, it, it gives like it's a very brutal type of sound and it's very aggressive and so I started listening to more and more of that kind of heavy thing and death metal bands and, and stuff like that and then uh, I think like one of the first actually deathcore bands that I heard was Old Shot Butters so it was like a long long time ago but yeah it was like a Okay, I've got two more questions. Um, okay. What, uh, what are your favorite bands to tour with? To tour with? Um, we just did a, a tour, another one, because we did many, but with Carnifex. You guys know the band? Carnifex. Carnifex? Yeah, they're like awesome guys. It just, I love the music, but they're like best friends. So when we tour with them, it's basically like going on tour with your best friends. So that's really cool. And uh, I think I learned a lot, like talking to Rob Flynn. And uh, so touring with Machine Head was really awesome. And uh, he's a really cool guy. And, you know, just like for me, it's like, wow, I'm like having breakfast with Rob Flynn. And it's like, that's, that was uh, like in the beginning. And then he's like, every time we play around California, he's not on tour, he comes to shows nicest guy so when you go on tour is that kind of vibe and it, it feels like kind of like a, a like a, a metal godfather when he comes around and it's like he has like advices about like can be about the show can be about the sound and things and plus he's a he's a big ultra fetish fan that's how it all started like the so the, it's it's really cool to tour with those like those guys too and uh, when did you start including like your technicality into deathcore? How did you do that? How did you come up with that? Um, I think it's it's like perfect music for like pushing the the like in challenging yourself to do you know like the, a lot of the solos are usually very technical and then like not not in general with heavy metal there's like a lot of technical playing and stuff like that so. It, I think that was part of it, and uh, and then even rhythmically you can do so much. So uh, you know, to to me, also playing rhythmically in an interesting way that's part of like playing technical, you know. So it, it feels like it's perfect music, and for me, you know, I get a lot of freedom. So like leads and like solos and all that stuff, I can really do pretty much what I want, and that, so I have like so much, you know, freedom to experiment. So. When was the first tattoo? Which was your first tattoo? When did you get it? It's here. You can't see it. Yeah. It's like too tight. But <laughs> yeah, it's up here. When did you get it? When? Uh, I think 2005. <laughs> no, your age. Oh, OK. Well, well, you can figure out. Oh, no. OK. I was probably 20, 24, 25, something like that. Yeah. You don't see a lot of tattoos here. Uh, hey, Francesco. Just uh, a few. You use the RGA7 live, so does the scoop switch affect your tone anyway? Do you use the scoop switch on the RGA7? Oh, for the, sorry, for the EQ, for the active EQ? Yeah. Uh, actually, on my RGA7, I, I switched that to, um, I, I don't have it anymore. They just, like, put it, like, a a little flat thing of plastic. I'm not using the switch, I changed pickups. Oh, yeah. So I'm not using, the, those pickups are using uh, Simo Duncan Blackout, so there's active, and that's, yeah, that's what I, I'm gonna play one more song, oh no. One, there. This is, all right, I'll play after, or not. All right, one more question, I'll play a song. Tell us something about the word uh, characteristics. I mean, if I want to play death and I need a heavy song, what would, would you suggest? In terms of gear? Sorry? In terms of gear to use? Yeah. No, no, not gears. I want, uh, I want to know what about the uh, woods, woods. Kind of woods you use, like maple. Like oh. Um, this, one, this one, for example, is mahogany. 
and uh, I really like the tone of the mahogany. So for me, it's like it's a very like punchy, thick type of sound that I really like. And uh, I I had like different guitars with different kind of like fretboard woods, and I experimented with like ebony, and then mostly it was because of the the color. I always thought you know it looks cool because it's black, but. I don't know, and now, and then I learned a lot actually from the people working at Ibanez. They were telling me like the differences between that, the, the, you know, the characteristic of the wood. And now I think like uh, rosewood, like for fingerboards, is, is actually my favorite. It's the best for touring and traveling. It always stays very stable, you know. And like ebony, for example, it's like you never know what's going to happen to the. And um, yeah, so this. That's like it's pretty much like the way I like it. Uh, what about the pickups? EMG or Seymour Duncan? Seymour Duncan, all the way. Always play, always play Seymour Duncan. My whole life, I love Seymour Duncan.